Hello everyone, I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to my fly tying channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. So I put this channel together to share my love of salmon flies and fly tying. Uh, there's a little bit of something for everybody here. Um, I do showcase a lot of, you know, uh, very artsy, very um, specific, um, hard to tie salmon flies. But I also do tie a lot of, uh, you know, Pacific Northwest patterns, spay flies, D flies, things like that. So if you've got any uh, flies that you'd like to see tied, uh, something that you'd like to learn a little bit more about, by all means, please reach out to me, leave a message, um, comment in my videos, um, just leave a request. I'm happy to get to them. Um, now, all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Let's get on with it. Okay, so let's take this one off. And hopefully these are these should be longer. Ah yes, much better. The tips on these aren't quite as good as the last one that was up there, but <clears throat> I think that's okay. It's still gonna come out beautiful. Alright, so we'll bring that past the Indian Crow right to the tail. And tie that in. And now we're tying this in very similar to how we would tie in a regular wing. All right, you see right here, right there, that piece of tinsel is actually holding this up a little bit, but let's see here. Take your thumbnail and just kind of pack that down a little bit. Okay. This is what's called the drop bobbin technique, where you just put one loop over the top and just let the weight of the bobbin pull down and let that settle those fibers onto the hook. Once it's settled, you can make another loop. And then a third. Make a little bit of adjustment here. Okay. And there we are. I'm going to put a tiny little drop of Salire Clear on there just to hold that wing in place. We're so close to the to the head now and as you can see there's a, a very large drop off. So we'll just throw a little bit of Salire on there. And that'll just keep that in place without adding too much bulk. We'll let that dry and then we'll set the wing. Be back in a few. Alright, so this is now dry and firm. So we'll go ahead and now we're going to mount the wing. 
Not sure if this wing size is going to be a little on the large side, but we can modify if we need to. Now you'll notice in the wing on the Jock Scott, there's supposed to be some peacock wing in there. I unfortunately do not have peacock wing large enough for this. So I uh, basically just did not include it. But the wing has yellow, red, and blue turkey, uh, florican bustard, cori bustard, and then am gold on top. So like I said before, we're going to lay this over the top of the underwing and we want to line those tips up. That way the main wing blends in just like that. This is quite a large wing. There we go. Again, using the drop bobbin method. Now I'm keeping these fingers as tight as I can on that wing. You don't want the wing to shift at all. Uh, if any of the sh any shift takes place, you want it to be on these front parts of the fibers. And now you'll see when you pull on the thread, it'll want to start to roll towards the back. So you can actually twist that forward towards you a little bit. Tighten down. Add another wrap. Twist it back a little towards you. Tighten a little bit more. Roll back towards you again. One more wrap. Now let's have a look and see where we're at. And the white tip on the back side just kind of slid down a little. So we'll just tuck that back up underneath that main wing. Hmm. Might have to reset that. So close. Okay, let's just see what's going on with this underling here. I see the issue. Okay. So, if you look right there, You'll see that the underwing is kind of splayed out a little bit too much. That's because of the tinsel and some of this uh, throat material. So what we'll do, as soon as I find my tweezers again, we are going to pull out some of these fibers and try and thin that spot out a little bit. Well, I knew it wouldn't be long until this desk was a mess. And it seems the tweezers I always wind up losing somehow. Bear with me. take these and we'll just pluck them out a little bit. Taking these fibers out isn't going to hurt the look of the fly at all. 
If anything, it'll benefit you greatly. Take this underwing and kind of squeeze it together a little bit right here at the tie-in. And that should help keep that a little bit flatter. Slight bit of a fold right there, but that's much better. Okay, let's try the wing again. are all lined up. Again, I'm helping those fibers settle down a bit. I flipped under again. Darn it. Something about the shape of the wing is bothering me. I'm not certain what it is though. Alright, I think I'm quite happy with this. This underwing is bothering me though. Okay, so now you can see right here where I've got 
the underwing and the main wing all lined up. Gives it a much smoother presentation. All right, so we're going to add a little bit of Salire now to right here, the tie end point. And again, we'll let that dry before moving on. Let that soak in. Let that dry, and I'll see you guys momentarily. All right, so now that's dry. Let's go ahead and start the sides. The sides are wood duck and teal. I've already kind of prepared the, the wood duck and the teal feathers. Now all I did to prepare them really was just to switch, strip off the fluff from the base of it and all of the little wispy feathers on the side. And I'll show you here in just a second how we're going to select out the strips. First, what we'll do is we'll use our, our bodkin, the needle, and kind of get rid of this lower part. I want to have some really nice barring, so I want to have this section here. And this little lower part here I might use for, um, I don't know, maybe some Bergman flies or, or something like that later on. So I'm going to reach down here and just snip that off. Okay. Now, we're right at the section that I would like. So what we'll do is take the bodkin again and pull out some of the fibers, and let's just take a quick look and see. Length is good, and I think the width is going to be great too. Not too overpowering. So again, we'll just go ahead and snip that out right here. And we'll set that aside. And we'll take some teal, same thing, here's our bodkin, <clears throat> pardon me, and we'll pull out some of that, and then we'll just snip that off. Sorry, I'm going to do this off the camera, it's a little bit harder in front of the camera. I'm only working with about four or five inches between the camera and the fly, so doing other things in front of the camera becomes a slight bit difficult. couple of fibers from the wood duck since a little extra kind of came along with it. And this is going to be for these are for the back side so what we'll do is we're going to take these and marry them together. You'll make it so that way the tips line up. And then you should be able to just very gently caress them into place. And then once they marry each other, they're ready to go. We'll do that one more time for the near side real quick and then we'll get these mounted up.
bear with me. Okay. Now we'll take our teal and our wood duck. I'm going to take this end here. Actually, I'm going to carefully snip away some of this wing so it's not completely in the way. Take this, lay it on there so that way it bends the fibers here. There we go. The teal has a slight bit of a curve to it, but I think that's okay. side. And try to line these up evenly. go. Now you should be able to look right down the center of the fly from the top and line up the barring on the wood duck as you can see there. Both sides look equally good. And now we have the jungle cock eyes that will go in right underneath here. That's beautiful. I like that. Now I'll just find a mate for that one. Now 
Okay. So now you see these two here. The eyes are the same size. But the length is a little bit different, but that really doesn't matter. We'll just strip back to the same size, same amount. So that way they become the same length. Hold on, folks. I'll be right back. Okay. So I had to select a different uh, jungle cock feather for one of them. The smaller one was a little smaller than I really wanted. As you can see, the jungle cock's being kept away from the fly a bit too much by the hackle. So I'm just going to sneak in here and just pull a couple out. Just kind of get them out of the way. Same thing I think is going to be an issue on this side, so we'll just try to get a couple of these apple fibers out of the way. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Next step. <clears throat> Man, excuse me. Okay, next is the bronze mallard roof. So 
So it's the kind of the same process as with the wood duck and the teal. We take the stem and we peel away the fluff and the fibers on the one side of the stem that we're not going to use because they're just too small. We'll leave the tips on there. In the end, the bronze mallard should look like this. And then once again, we'll line up how much we're going to use. This one's got some damage. Let's see if that's going to be enough. Yeah, I think that'll be plenty. a little thick. And just trim a little bit away. Not too much. Even just a couple of fibers makes a big difference on these. Okay, so before I put on the roof, I'm going to have to put a little bit of salire on here, let that so let that um, harden up a little bit, and then trim this down a little. That'll just make it easier to get it all on there. So... All right, I will see you guys as soon as that is dry. Okay, so that's nice and dry. Let's uh, go ahead and trim this up. All right, so that's dry, and I kind of just went and trimmed it up just a little bit. Hopefully that's enough to get the uh, roof on there. I'll take that. Make sure it's got a decent curve to it.
I'm going to try the other method. See how that goes. And the other method is lining them up back to back at their shortest points. Hmm. Well, then I gotta kind of trim the one side down just a little bit. Take them back to back like this. So I'll just go back to how I was doing it. Another piece kind of fell back here. Hmm. See what's going on here. All right, so when it comes to feather selection, things are kind of, it's rather important, especially when it comes to doing roofs. And I didn't pay attention quite enough. If you look at this bronze mallard, this is very straight. Now that can be remedied and gotten rid of. But that straightness is a little bit hard to get rid of. Kind of have to mess with it a little bit. Basically, all you're going to do is twist that just like that. See how that makes a, a rounded shape now? And we'll take that. There. That's better. And then the backside seemed to already have a decent shape to it. So 
Again, we'll line these up so they're very similar in length. Just a very tiny drop of saliva on these. Next, we're going to be cutting most of this off completely with a razor blade. So I want those nice and secure. Be back shortly. All right, it's actually the next day here, but um, all we got left is the topping and horns. So, get my horns ready. Okay, so the topping, I've already kind of gone ahead and shaped this one. And if you haven't seen my shaping video on toppings, um, I have a, go back and have a look at it if um, you're not really sure on how to shape these. Basically, if it's too curved, you can use your um, bodkin and actually run that along the spine on the back side of the spine and that will actually help kind of flare out a little bit more and then right here towards the front if you need a little bit more curvature just use your thumbnail and very gently pinch at it Set that on there. I'm going to just do two wraps for a moment just to see how that's sitting. Now, I am pretty happy with this fly. Um, I do wish the wing was a, just a smidge longer, or the tail just a smidge shorter. As you can see right here, there's just this tiny little bit of space between the tail 
and the wing. But I'm going to leave it as is because I do like the shape and I do think it does look very good. And the other thing is right up here, this body's being blocked a little bit. One more thing to put on is the Kutinga. Almost left that off. We're going to set that right here. Go ahead and remove the majority of the fluff. And when you tie in the Gotenga, if you remember in my video on Monday, I had mentioned how the shape of the Gotenga rachis is kind of triangular. So it can make for rather difficult tying in. When you tie in, lay it on there nice and smooth, nice and easy, and very gently wrap your thread around it. It doesn't have to be tight. very gently and we'll fix that later okay and the other Nope, there it goes right there. You notice that just rolled a little bit? Let's try this again. We'll put it on the back side first.
And as you can see there again, see right there that backside curled a little, rolled a little bit. I'm just going to turn that off. Sorry about that. Now it does help when you're tying these in to use a little bit of the fluff on there underneath the thread. That'll kind of help keep it from rolling, but it's not a fix-all for it. Being gentle and careful pretty much is the only way to make sure it doesn't roll on you. This one wants to just roll on me. Just a little bit too much pressure in the wrong spot and it'll and these feathers will roll. Yep, it's going to roll again, I can tell. Hmm. Kingfisher is much easier to work with. A terrible feeling this head is going to be huge. Okay, there we go. We'll fix all that. And now the last thing is the horns. The horns are just blue and gold, blue and gold macaw tail. I'm not actually using a center either. I'm using a, one of the side tails. As you can see here, one side is, is nice and long. And the other side's rather short. So the other side would be good for smaller flies. You know, 2 0, 3 0. The longer ones are much more suited for the larger flies. Okay, when tying your horns in, you want to tie them with the blue side facing up and the yellow side facing down. And then you can orient them how you like to 
get them to sit properly. Here we go. I'm sorry I have a call coming in that I must take. I'll be right back to finish the head. All right, so here we are at the end of the video. Time to just make this head. And this one will be finished. Myself a nice sharp blade first. Okay. Let's try. And get as close to the thread as we can without cutting the thread. And then we'll just cut it all at a slight angle. A much bigger head than I had hoped for, but there was a lot of material that went on to that. Now we're going to take some wax and heat it up with a lighter a little bit. And then we'll take our bodkin and just get a little bit on the tip. If it starts to harden, just hit that with a lighter really quick. I'm going to add that to the front, the sides, and the bottom. At this point, I can go ahead and cut away the thread. Just continue to add it all the way around until the whole head is coated. I 
It's okay if it starts off a little bit lumpy. You can fix that. First job is to just get it on there. All right, once it's all on there, then you have two options. You can use a cauterizer if you've got a tip that you're willing to get a little bit dirty. and Or you can use your bodkin and just heat that up really good. You don't have to get it red hot. But enough that you can melt that wax again and start actually forming your head. And you can get the shape that you want out of it. Just very carefully and slowly. Melt that wax. Move it around a little bit. Make sure you get everything nice and coated, but also make sure that it's not lumpy. Or odd shaped, because that will show through once you start putting your varnish on. That'll suffice. I got this thing from uh, a fellow fly tire, Mr. Richard Harris. He, um, he made this for me. I think he 3D printed it. It literally looks like a cylinder. But there's a small little hole in the front. And inside it, it unscrews. And then inside I have copper wire. It's basically a, um, like a Brillo pad type thing. And I just pack that right in there real tight. And then whenever my bodkin or dubbing needle is dirty, whether it's got wax on it or head cement or anything, it just goes right inside there and that steel wool will clean the tip right up and get all the wax off. It's actually quite nice. Okay, so next will be the Solire Black. 
going to reshape this throat quick. You see, like, like I said earlier in the video, that the little bit of dubbing wax that I put on there would kind of dry out a little bit and the throat would take on a, a little bit of a better shape. Maybe a couple uncooperative fibers, no big deal. I'll just pluck those out. Okay. And now we just coat the wax. A little bit of saliva black. The wax will make it so you don't necessarily need more than one coat. Sometimes more than one is rather nice anyway, but the wax kind of makes that a little easier to not have to keep coming back to it. Wax will also seal everything and keep it all together. And you can get a nice shaped head out of it. And of course in this case it is a little bit large. And if you see the salire or varnish that you use start to run a little bit, you can just use your needle and run your needle along the underside as it drips. And there you have it. There is the Jock Scott, a size 7 L, and uh, this one is using all authentic materials. I, I don't do it often. I think I've only tied one before with authentic materials, and it'll probably be a long time before I do it again. But I wanted to demonstrate for you guys the use of the materials with the Toucan, the Indian Crow, and the Kotinga. So um, there you go. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video, or videos, I should say. If you did, um, please give it a thumbs up. Um, that helps out the channel, and so do subscriptions. So if you're not subscribed, think about subscribing. Uh, you can also get uh, alerts and notifications on when my new videos come out. I will try to have a, a new material video out every Monday, and uh, usually a fly to follow, so demonstrating the materials being used in the video. So... Uh, all that being said, I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, and uh, we'll see you in the next video on Monday. Take care, everyone. Happy time.